Hey guys, this is Chestnut Crow Graphics. Sorry about the lack of tutorials that I haven't been putting up. A lot has come into my schedule, but now that's pretty much squared away with, and I can go ahead and get you guys some new material. And this is a project that I was working on for a client. Well, actually, I'm still working on it for him. And it's kind of like a folding effect. That's what we're working with. And that's what I'm going to be teaching you guys, so let's get right into it. Alright, so with this tutorial, we're definitely taking use of rigging this model and then also a symmetry because originally I had took this M and I pretty much split it in half and then I put symmetry onto it and I did it so good that there's no seam right here. And all right, pro skills. Not really. But uh, the main focus that we're gonna be going on is creating this folding crumple effect. And which actually, it's really, really easy to do. So, so far that's all we have and that's what we're gonna go over. So let's get right into it. New project, camera, we're going to go ahead and actually, no, we're not going to do camera yet. Let's go to character. No, not character. MoGraph? Yeah, MoGraph. Mo text. And now, when it comes to this, you're going to need to do a letter that's symmetrical or can be symmetrical in some shape or form. So uh, I'll just go with the M that I used. And we're going to change the font to something that could make it symmetrical. I use Mirad, 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 I guess Mirad Pro for it. And uh, I made it bold. There we go. And now for it to have that 2D ish look to it, we're going to decrease the depth to like two let's see that's one so that gives me just a flat object but i don't want a flat object well let's see that actually just might work perhaps let's see that gives does that give me 100 percent flat and then one gives me like just about flat yeah so one is actually really good to use with this Alrighty, so we got our letter, we got it in here, and we're going to go ahead and hit C to customize it. And we're just going to, let's do that, go to select children, hit C, and then go to select children again. And we are going to connect objects plus delete. So now we got this one M right here. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and texture it when I need to. And if you're doing this for an intro, make sure that whatever color you want it to kind of fold into, I'm guessing, however you would word that, make sure that the color of the back of the M or whatever uh, letter you're using, it matches the background that you're using for the intro. So with his, I chose red. I turn speckler off, and then for this, I'm just going to take out the color completely. And I'm going to apply those colors to it. So select that, make that red, then select that, make it black. And as for the edges, UL. For my loop select, I'll make that black. So this is what our M looks like. It's looking pretty flat, which is exactly what we want. Now we're going to go to camera, and we're going to go to front. It may look weird now that it's not showing any color. Actually, I should probably go to the back. There we go, that's what we're looking for. 
And now since this shape is the shape, this M is symmetrical, what we're going to do is I'm gonna create a was that a cube? No, that wasn't a cube. I'm gonna go ahead and create a cube. Customize it, and then I need to move it up a little bit and just kind of match it. So let's see, right around there is fine. I'm completely eyeballing it just for the sake of the tutorial, but yeah. Then we're going to use bool. Select those two, drag it in there. That needs to be on the top. And now I can really go in and adjust what I need. Because this right there, we don't want that. That is ugly. It's atrocious. We don't want that. That's non-professional. So, let's see. I want it like dead center, or at least close. All right, I think that'll be good. I mean, from a distance when you look at it, it's not gonna matter because it's gonna line up perfectly. But it's the small things that really count when it comes to this kind of stuff. And now we got that selected. We're gonna hit C. And then we're gonna make sure that all of it's selected. Select children. And then connect objects plus delete. And now here's where the fun part comes. We need to rig this thing. And if you haven't seen, uh, well, if you don't know how to rig it, here is a tutorial right at the top right. And that's going to bring you how to use a joint tool to rig a model. All right, so got this. And I want to choose an area that's going to have very little movement and start from there first. So right around here should be good. Control click. Then I'm just going to be control clicking all through here. Make sure I get a nice rig. All right, that should be good. And I'm going to take this joint. I'm going to take it out of the root. Bring it right under our bold object. Delete that. Gonna highlight it. Select children. Well, actually, before I do that, I need to make sure that my joints are perfectly aligned with my M. So, perspective. Yeah, it's pretty much looking on the back side, and I kind of want it to. I want the joints to be like right in the middle of this. So let's see, where did my move tool go? Oh, all right. And it looks like I'm gonna have to do some slight tedious work, but I want this effect to work out smoothly and perfectly the way that I had it in my with my client. So that way in case if you guys choose to do this, then it works out for you guys. All right, so that's looking good. I uh, gotta adjust that one. All right, let's see, skip right there. And those are going right through. Just take those out a little bit. So that way we got something good to work with here. Alrighty, there we are. It's looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna select my half M or whatever letter you guys choose. I'm going to select children. And I'm gonna go to character, commands, bind. And if everything went correct, I'm just gonna choose one. 
I should be able to rotate it, and there we go. And now to start with the folding effect, we're going to need to go ahead and start key, hit this little button to start automatic keyframing. Uh, this last joint you really don't have to worry about because it's not going to animate anything. But we're going to start with this joint. Then we're going to hit keyframe at the zero frame. And depending on how fast you want this to go, uh, for my client's intro, I chose going about five frames, and then I animated it like that. And basically all I'm doing is, I'm just gonna make it go up about 180 something degrees, so that way it folds. And then I'm gonna click on the next joint, keyframe it, move about five more frames and repeat the process over and I'm gonna do this with each individual little joint so I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video so that way this doesn't take forever and then we'll get on to the next part Alrighty, and we have finished that part. So I'm going to zoom out, and we're going to take a look at what we just created. And so that's what we have at the current moment. Let me go back up. And as we can see, it's folding right around there, which is exactly the results that we want. And now remember when I said that it needs to be symmetrical? Well, this is the reason why. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna click on symmetry. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drag our object right in there. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that these two ends meet. So make sure that your object in the symmetry nerb is selected and go ahead and match it up the best that you possibly can. Just about. So close. Boom. Seamless line right there. And that's exactly what we're going for. And because we have this on symmetry, everything from this side of the M is automatically copied over. So if I play the animation, both of them fold. And now to finish this off, we find the keyframe where it completes that, which mine's at 75. I'll keyframe it there, go to coordinate, and then I'm gonna change this to zero. There we go. Have I guys ever told you how hard it is to record tutorials in my house? Well, apartment. Because I have people that just randomly bust in. Interesting. But last but not least, now that we have our effect done, and it just crumples down nice and smoothly the way we want it to, it's time for the final touches of it before we render it. I'm going to go to Effect, Ambient Occlusion, and you can mess with these settings however you like. Just make sure that when you do mess with these settings, that the keyframe is on zero, or otherwise you're going to end up keyframing this, and it's going to look really weird when you go to render it. So accuracy, I like 100%. Maybe some contrast, I'll go with 10 
And assuming that you want this to have a 2D look, you'll either choose front or back, just depending on where you put the color. Yeah, the color's right there. There's our effect, nice and folding. Folding pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure about how you guys feel about that. I personally don't care because it's only gonna last for like one frame. And then it just folds over. And then off it goes. Oh, uh, before I go, it might help if you set up a camera object. Just saying. Let's see, that's on back. Let's make sure that's right there. All right, so that's all good. Render, set our output, 1920, 1080. All right, that's all good to go. It's in the frame. It might help if uh, do all frames, even though this little effect line lasts like, what, 60 frames makes two seconds. So it's about two, seconds and five seconds of a second i guess you could say that yeah we got that save i always do png alpha new folder crump comp alrighty crump and save so good to go and that's not the render button there we go and it's rendering out so I have been just on Crow graphics and this is how you can use a joint tool to fold up a letter that is symmetrical and I will see you guys in the next video take care